Okay, enough refactoring. Let's go over to the project. And um, one of the things I sometimes, especially when I've switched to a, a completely new version of Eclipse, um, or if I'm setting up a new workspace, I might want to pull in projects from a, a different workspace. So one of the easiest ways to do that is just to say File, um, Import Existing Projects into Workspace, say Next go to the directory where the the actual project is you probably want to say copy that project into this workspace otherwise you can use it exactly from where it is if you um, are using working sets you can add it to an existing working set and um, just click finish and the project will come in I had just done this on this project and then one of the things to note on the net burner at least is you need to kind of come into your properties come down to the net burner options and reset the target platform it'll lose this setting um, so sometimes you'll get an error when you first come here so just click on another setting come back to it a second time and then then pick your target platform um, another nice thing um, is sometimes you have files in one project um, like I've been moving towards more library based development so I may want to move something from a particular project like my shell um, over into the library so I can click whatever files I want to move, hold down the control key and then you see the little plus icon and I can drag these down to another project and when I but, um, I'm just going to let go so that I don't copy them, but it'll copy them down there and if you don't hold the control you want to move them out of one into another then you can move them as well. Another thing that's easy to overlook is up here in the toolbar is a little icon for toggle block selection mode and there are times when this can be really useful, I don't have a good example but what uh, block selection lets you do is you click on it now you can just take a rectangular selection of code um, especially if you have something on the right that needs to be on the left or vice versa and you just hit copy or do whatever it is you want to do and then I'm just going to paste that junk down here now and you can see it, it took my exactly what I had highlighted and posted it down there a couple of nice features for navigating your type hierarchy is you can just go to a class name and hit control T and it gives you a quick pop-up window on on that class you can see the derivation path and then the other um, hotkey is F4 so you hit F4 and then down below it opens up and you can kinda of drill into the base classes and go to various places very easily here so those are two nice features there's a nice little feature for macros. I actually don't use macros, um, but the testing framework I use does use them. And so all the tests and the suite name are macros. So these are macros. And if you hover over them, you get this macro expansion, which you've probably seen. But if you drag down into that box, um, it turns into a, an explorer box so that you can kind of better see and you can move this around. Um, you can see the, the macro and then down here in the lower left you get some navigation tools so you can look at macros that it depends on and things like that. I also find it useful to um, sometimes use coloring on my um, consoles. I end up with so many windows open here that I like to have um, know when I'm on the build console and when I'm on um, some of the external tools console so if I run if I lint a file then I've got that set up and it comes up in yellow and I know I'm looking at that one versus looking at the um, the build background versus some of the normal ones that are white and the way you do that is up in preferences um, you just type color into here and um, actually it's probably easier to type console into here Okay, so here's the build console, um, and you can come down here and just click on this icon and, and set the background color, and then your uh, run debug console, which is what um, when Lint ran, you can set that background color here, and then you can see there are other ones as well. And since I brought up the testing framework, some you uh, right click and say new, and if you're going to write a new test source file. I don't like having to put all the, the same framework in and, and again so you can use templates from right here and you can configure templates um, directly from this box so you can see I, I created one I clicked new and then I created one called unit test plus plus file and then I put in the things I need for 
a unit test. So now when the box comes up, all I have to do is um, give it a valid name, make sure this is selected, say finish, and I get a framework for testing. And you can do that for the way you like to write CPP files or .h files if you always create private um, copy constructors and assignment operators and you can put all that in there. So I find templates very, very useful um, to keep from writing a lot of repetitive code. So it's easy to overlook them and uh, they're well worth the time to explore. Okay, last tip for this session. If you do any HTML for the web server, build into NetBurner or whatever product you're using, uh, it's nice to have editors that, um, that that are a little better than those normal text editors. There's a C++ editor. There's nothing fancy about these editors. Um, I'm going to show you how to get them in a second. You know, they give you a little color picker. I like the, I've used the IntelliJ IDE, and it, it does a lot nicer things for picking colors. Shows you all the names, and it lets you format and align things the way this text is aligned. Um, but this is better than using a, a, a text editor and uh, same thing with uh, HTM files and I think this one by default I may have set up to use the Aptana this is the just the regular web editor that's built into Eclipse and uh, that's not a very interesting file let's get this one okay so you can see even though we've got our little window here that um, So it's all color coded and it has folding icons and it does some type of head features and it also has a little place down here you can click IE and uh, get a preview of what the page is going to look like although, although as it turns out not a very accurate preview. So to get that it's just under the help menu go install new software shrink this up a little bit Okay, for the regular web editors that are part of Eclipse, you can just come down to them on Galileo. So you can just pick Galileo. And I'm trying to unclick this, hide things that are already installed. And then right down here under Web, XML, and EE Development, open that up. And then scroll down, and there's a web page editor there as well. So then for Aptana, there's, um, I already have two of them, but you'll want to go to this is what you want right here. You want to add the click add and put in the http download aptana org slash tool slash studio slash plugin slash install slash studio and this is up on there's a link to this up on their site as well and then that loads this aptana studio you just put a check and you install that and it's a free suite and you'll get all that. I'm not sure if this is I just put this in not too long ago so I've already gotten some warnings about 30 day demo so I think you get a, a pro version at first and then after 30 days it reverts to whatever the free version is. But anyway they're useful for to have a little bit better editors.